Hello everyone, uh, miss you all and uh, I'm happy to be with you and uh, I would like first to thank you all for your coming and waiting for my session as I, I know that this is the last session for the conference. Uh, my name is Islam Abdelbari. I'm a PhD researcher in Faculty of Business at uh, my, my fourth year. Um, um, it's my pleasure to be here with uh, my friend and, and this conference like each year. I would like to thank uh, my colleague Nasser and his uh, committee for this wonderful uh, and excellent organization actually and especially uh, I have watched many sessions online live stream so thank you for that. I will uh, also want to uh, appreciate uh, my supervisor, Dr. James Benhen, I don't know if he's attended or not, for his co cooperation and support in the research presented. Uh, now I'm going to present the, my, my presentation today, Imperfect Reform, Potential and the Challenges of uh, Arab Development. My presentation will be in five parts, background and justification, motivation, why I'm doing that research, the research questions, methodology, results, and uh, lastly, the conclusion. First of all, and in terms of the potential and the Arab uh, countries had started its development from a long time. By mid of last century, development was made it was based on a strong government and central planning after oil booming uh, arab countries especially uh, gulf countries started uh, ambitious program for uh, public spending and infrastructure service however this type of development collapsed during uh, 18 therefore many arab countries have started a new development same with cooperation with international organizations like IMF and World Bank. This reform were concentrated with uh, structural reform adjustment and macroeconomic stabil stabilization aimed to attract more FDI and improve market capabilities. However, as we can see in this graph, how the economic growth rate in Arab countries uh, has been unstable and fluctuated over the time and we couldn't see any significant improvement due to these reform programs and if we compo compare the arab growth uh, the economic growth of arab region comparing to other region even the advanced economies or developing economies we can see uh, how the economic growth for arab region is very low comparing to all other regions in the world, especially after 2011. Due to all of this failure, after implementing the economic reform programs, as it doesn't affect the standard of living for Arab country, for Arab citizen, so the wave of protest that is spread throughout most of the Arab region asking for new development model. The Arab street had a clear voice that no accept the current uh, uh, reform which exists already. The, the Arab Spring reflect not only the demand for job and improving the standard of living, but the protests were against corruption and unequal access to economic resources. Therefore, the study tried to understand the possible explanation whether the, econo the economic growth performance of the region has been disappointing because the Arab countries' economies have, have lagged behind in terms of reform or due to the reform program itself. In order to achieve this aim, we need first to define what is reform and how we can measure and what is the economic indicator related to that reform and then we can determine who's the winner and loser from this reform and then explain the reasons that lead to uh, current outcome. 
In terms of the research methodology, the study used a comparative heuristic approach to examine the outcome of economic and social reform in the Arab world, comparing to other regions. And the analysis were taken were, was taken in two level. The first level will compare Arab region as a whole to other uh, uh, region in the world, and the second level is comparison between uh, uh, subgroups inside the Arab region itself. Uh, the, the, uh, the, the, the study sample included 78 uh, countries, including 17 Arab countries, the data from World Development Indicator and EIU, and we classified the, uh, the period for, uh, for period, sub period. And we classified uh, the Arab groups into four groups based on the World Bank classification. Uh, for four groups, the first group, uh, resources poor, river abundant, which include uh, the emerging economies like Egypt and Jordan, Lebanon, Morocco, Tunisia. Resources rich, labor abundant, the second group, uh, which country has uh, 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 resources, oil, oil, our national resources, in addition, uh, human capital, high human capital. The third group, resources rich, labor importing. Uh, represent to GCC, uh, Gulf countries, in addition, Libya. Uh, the, the fourth group is uh, uh, low-income countries, including Sudan and Yemen. Uh, the research defined reform as the, the policies and action were taken by government to achieve to achieve a significant improvement in the economic condition, aiming to achieve inclusive development and improve the standard living of citizens. Based on this definition, we can classify the socio-economic reform into three uh, uh, main uh, categories. The first one is economic stabilization, the second structural adjustment reform and social development policies. The first group stabilization means make your the economy stable, the macroeconomic indicators such exchange rate, inflation, unemployment, all of this becomes stable so, so we can sustain the economic growth in, in that case. Structural adjustments mean uh, uh, build uh, the capabilities of market, uh, reform taxes, banking, uh, banking reform and uh, 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 social development process as well. So in that case, we create through uh, uh, principal component analysis the macroeconomic indicator, as we can see. So we transfer our, our first, we define the reform, and then we transfer reform to main indicators, and then the main indicator transfer into uh, 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 sub variable. So we can measure uh, all of these uh, together. So macroeconomic instability uh, include internal and external, and then structural market reform, a human capital and physical infrastructure. So this is the component and how we, we measure that reform through principal component analysis. Okay. So the research uh, result. Although, uh, there are several a number of successful models uh, uh, in, in some Arab countries. The Arab reform experience in general has been slow and gradual, disappointing, selective, inappropriate, and confused, and uh, incompatible. Uh, there, of, of course, there is a, a different... Uh, uh, chart and, and analysis... Uh, all, all, of, all of this about the reform experience in, 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 in Arab region. But we can use this scatter diagram to summarize the whole of the story. As seen in that scatter diagram, Arab countries have divided into three clusters according to structural reform and macro stability as an average between 1995 to 2014 and is, is not uh, surprising that these uh, the, the same categories like the same we used in uh, our study. The first group, as we can see here, in quadrant three and four, 
excuse me, can you see the cursor of the mouse? Yes. Okay. So the first group in in in, in quantum three and four, which mainly for oil ex Arab oil exporter, seven countries, but highly economically stable. Only three, for, for, only three of them, Bahrain, and Emirates and Qatar have succeeded in attach this stability with structure uh, uh, reform. Although it's limited, but at least they achieve somehow structure reform progress. But overall, for all these group, structure reform has have, have generally been insufficient. As we can see here, Kuwait and Saudi Arabia has a very limited achievement in, 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 in terms of business and the structure reform. The second group in the figure, as we can see, concentrated in quadrant two, okay, is mainly re, uh, re, uh, the, the group of the Arab reformer, resources poor, labor abundant, in Lebanon, Egypt, Morocco, Jordan, and Tunisia. All of these countries adapted a, a recommendation for, of international institutions from IMF and World Bank. However, after 20 years, these countries, even if achieved some structural reforms, they failed to achieve economic stability. So generally, this, this reform in, this in these countries were inappropriate and weak and failed to achieve its aim as to make the economic stable and improve, uh, improve the economic performance even comparing to Eastern Europe or Latin America. The last group, as we can see in quadrant one, included uh, resources rich and labor countries and low income countries, except Libya. Libya is an exception for this case. This include Iraq, uh, Yemen, Sudan, and, and Syria. Why, why Libya is here? Because the massive oil uh, revenue and the cancellation of international economic syndication after 2005 helped Libya to achieve that significant level of stability, to achieve level of stabilization, but without achieve any progress in structural reform, which is a main obstacle again to improve the economic uh, uh, growth. But due to the in political instability and civil war in, now in Libya, this stabilization could not continue as it, and maybe Libya could transfer to be a new Iraq, like what happened in Iraq in, in last century, in the end of last century. In fact, uh, there is six reason had driven to this situation in Arab countries. The first reason, as my colleagues Marwan, talking from uh, the last session about the resource curse. The oil dependence is the main reason for uh, preventing to shift to uh, structure adjustment reform or even uh, uh, make the production diversification in, in, that can, in, in countries, in Arab countries, mainly for Gulf countries. Okay, as seen here in, in this uh, uh, graph, how the export concentration index has a, a, a strong positive correlation with fuel export. The Arab oil exporter have, have outlier value, okay, compared to the rest of the world. We're all located here um, on top right of a scatter diagram, okay, which reflects the, again, which reflects the direct impact of dependency on hydrocarbon resources export in these countries. The second important reason for making the economic, socio-economic reform for some Arab countries disappointing, especially in, in, um, in resources poor, labor abundant, and low income uh, uh, countries is civil war and armed conflict. Uh, we can see here in that figure how improvements 
in socioeconomic reform uh, in socioeconomic reform programs are primarily linked to political instability this is the third group this is the first group here is arab emerging uh, economies the second is country with civil war and you can see how all indicators this is the macroeconomic instability so this is a negative value so all of these countries facing uh, 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 many problems due to the civil war and and arab conflict however here this is the gulf countries without libya we can see improvement in 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 macroeconomic instability uh, external stability is very good except here structural reform and and lastly the physical infrastructure of course achieve a very high progress Uh, the third reason, which directly related to the difficulty of achieving economic stability, especially among the Arab reform, reformers, is the twin deficit hypothesis. Twin deficit hypothesis, or not economists, may refer to the situation where an economy is running post, uh, uh, have a, a physical, uh, physical uh, deficit and also deficit in, in current account, as we can see here in the second uh, figure. We can see here how uh, the, 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 blue, the blue line is the worded line and the red is the Arab line. So we can see how the Arab line is more steeper than worded line, which reflects the direct relation between public debt and external debt and the same here between the budget uh, the deficit and the current uh, account. So this is increase uh, 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 the ha, increase the problem, make it more severe for Arab countries. In addition, for for this reason, the complexity of economic uh, and macroeconomic structure, uh, uh, which is related to uh, macroeconomic instability. For instance. For instance, this is a strong positive association between unemployment and inflation, which is the most dangerous uh, uh, economic problem faced the Arab region. As you can see here, in the again, the Arab is, is the red one and the world is the blue one. We can see the blue one taking the shape uh, like a Phillips curve, which is uh, some countries have a positive relation and other negative relation, while it totally different the, the case is totally different for arab region as it is, is, is a positive line and and again all arab countries most of arab countries are here in stagflation which is mean that arab countries have the post problem in high level of inflation and high level of unemployment rate One of the main uh, reasons for that failure is misgovernance and dictatorship, in particularly uh, uh, the constitutional framework, the level uh, of uh, an institution, the corruption level for government, uh, in insecure property right, uh, the intervention of government in market, in addition all other uh, factors related to political repression and uh, uh, economic uh, disparity. Say so again here, we can see by this figure, the scatter diagram here represents the relation between governance level and other aggregate development indicator or uh, uh, govern or reform performance. You can see here, this is the uh, uh, positive relation. Countries who achieved high level institution achieve a, a high progress in reform. So no Arab countries in this quadrant, and mainly most of Arab countries is here with low level of governance and low level of uh, uh, economic performance. Lastly, the failure were related to uh, the program itself. The majority of, of reform programs which launched in Arab countries and implemented through top to down approach based on the concept of trickle down effect. Trickle down effect means that we achieve high econo economic growth and then we'll 
this this growth will go down to poor people and middle and low uh, uh, social classes. However, because there is no ch available channel to transfer the impact of reform from top to down due to several reasons, especially level of corruption in effective government, um, absence of a strong uh, civil society, this is not happening. In addition, the affected be a group of people uh, didn't chair the decision making and thus, uh, thus they show a low commitment uh, to implement this policy, especially when these policies are related to social costs like uh, increased taxes or reduce the subsidies. So in general, yeah, I'm just one, one slide, yes. Yeah, okay. So in general, Arab countries um, uh, seen first to initiate reform and then consider how it will fit in good strategy. Like it built rooms before designing houses. So my my recommendation, of course, is this this type of analysis, which is a heuristic uh, comparative advantage, we com complete this analysis through uh, 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 analytical and regression analysis in in other anal in other uh, chapters in my thesis. So at the end of this. Uh, analysis, we can recommend, strongly recommend that especially after the Arab Spring Revolution, we need to a uh, uh, new development model. Uh, actually, we can say that development with a human face, so we can integrate the traditional concept of development and, and the growth with human rights and human development poverty reduction in uh, education and, and health as well. Thank you very much for your listening. Hello, Islam. Thank you for Hello. the presentation. I find it very interesting. And there are just two sort of well observations or comments. Um, one is I find that you, if you have panel data, like mm -hmm. cross section time series, um, did you carry out hypothesis testing uh, using econometrics or did you leave it like this? Okay, thank you for your question. Yes, um, this is uh, we, we we use this this study as a, a explanatory study to understand what is going on on the Arab region and how and we we need to understand how we can measure that reform and 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 which variable related to it and discover the variable could affect the performance. As the economic performance for Arab region, and, and later we use the same data as, as we said, the panel data analysis. We use it as uh, uh, empirically. We tested empirically is all of these all of these variable tested empirically through regression, and we use all uh, our uh, well-known uh, techniques in panel data, starting from uh, uh, unit root and co-integration and. Uh, and the high, testing all hypotheses, but this is an, another analytical uh, chapter. But in that chapter, we use that uh, approach, heuristic uh, comparative approach, just to explore what is going on in, in the Arab region, because this is will not exist in literature. Okay. Um, my other comment is about the reasons you listed, uh, especially, for example, Reason number four, you said because of the fourth reason, the complexity and difficulties of macroeconomic problems. I wonder if they are actually the consequences rather than the causes. And in, in the addition, you mentioned about the Phillips curve. Um, uh, it should show an active relationship between unemployment and inflation. I wonder if you consider augmented Phillips curve instead of this original Phillips curve just involving unemployment and inflation themselves. Uh, 
well, um, if if you are talking about the complexity of economic structure and uh, the relation between, I think is is the cause and the effect as well. So this is uh, the natural of uh, the economic environment in Arab region, and at the same time, it's one of the main obstacles to achieve. Uh, 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 sustain economic growth. Um, regarding to Philip's care, I'm, I'm just want to show this is just to prove that uh, Arab region have a special case. It's not identical like other world, other countries. So simply you can see that that Philip's curve are drawn clearly here on on the um, for the whole sample while uh, for Arab uh, line, it's a straight uh, line like a positive relationship. Okay, just just to to, to know what is uh, the problem in that in these countries, right? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Yep. Can you pause it? Thank you, Hi. Islam Albari. Albari. Uh, my question is very simple. Going to your recommendation, you recommended uh, institutional reforms, and I know that uh, oil receipts uh, all over the world, of course, oil rich countries have issue to do with uh, transparency, declaring what you earn from oil, and that that's a regulatory uh, regulation on that international, uh, international extractive transparency international, that's a Meaty, that's ET. So, uh, in perspective of your research, your work, uh, is there anything like that in Arab uh, rich oil rich countries? International Extractive Transparency International, uh, sorry, initiative. Mm. ET. Thank you. That's it. And I wish you good luck in your in your work. Thank you, it's Hawk. Because for you to be able to make reforms, mm. you say, of course, World Bank data fine, of course, IMF data fine. You've mentioned all those key issues. But is the there's before you have to do, what do you get? What do you oil receipt is not being declared? Is there anything certain from that? If people know what they get, oil receipts, and they now have to think how they spend the money. That's when the diversification will come in. So, and then there's a regulation on that. That's ET, as International Extractive Transparency Initiative. Does this international framework in Arab countries, oil rich countries? I think it's worth considering. That's my own observation, I'm afraid. I mean, I wish you good luck. Thank you. Thank you, Ishaq, for your questions uh, or your comment. Actually, I doubt if if this kind of transparency is available in in, in Arab countries, especially in Gulf countries, uh, especially oil exporters or or uh, resource abundance uh, Arab resource abundance countries uh, have a severe problem in in governance and transparency as well. So, because because oil oil resources in Arab region associated strongly with the high level of corruption, right? So, if we uh, need a strong reform, we should start by these uh, basics: transparency and governance and an institution as well. If we need a real reform before we are talking about the macroeconomic indicator. This is at least from my own point of view. Okay. Okay, thank you very much, Islam.